Shalom, friends. Robert Gottslick here from the Friends of Israel Gospel Ministry. The last time we got together, we concluded the sixth chapter in the book of Zechariah. And uh, there we looked at another uh, reference to the Messiah here. We looked at the branch. And uh, I had mentioned uh, the last time that if you haven't looked at the chapter 3 of the book of Zechariah, I'd encourage you to go back to uh, through the Sermon Bite videos on Facebook or YouTube here, wherever you happen to be watching, and just go look at that teaching on the branch because um, it is it is wonderful to see how that... Uh, is talking about the Messiah here. And in the sixth chapter in the book of Zechariah, as we concluded here, we saw that reference to the branch again. And here it's in a reference to the millennial kingdom in where the Messiah is going to rule and to reign uh, in, in the temple. Um, and we know that, that when Yeshua returns, when Jesus returns, he will set up his millennial kingdom for a thousand years and he will rule on the throne of his father David from Jerusalem for a thousand years and then throughout all eternity. Um, but, uh, but here we see that they were to make uh, a double ring crown, uh, and they were to crown Joshua, the high priest, and it was to be a memorial, this crown in the temple. Of course, that was the temple they were building as they returned from Babylon to, to Jerusalem to rebuild the second temple. But this double ring crown was to be a memorial because we know when Jesus returns, when Yeshua returns, uh, he will reign as both high priest and king. And so this was to be a memorial. But I'd like to just, before we get into chapter 7 here, just read the last verse here in uh, chapter 6 here, uh, verse 15. So if you have your Bibles with you, I encourage you just to turn with me to Zechariah chapter 6. And I'm going to read verse 15 here. It says, And they that are far off, that would be the Gentiles here, shall come and help build the temple. So the Messiah is going to build the temple in the millennial kingdom. The Gentiles are going to help. Uh, and it says, and you shall know that the Lord of hosts has sent me unto you. And then there's this verse. And this shall come to pass if you will diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God. So friends, there's a conditional promise here. A conditional promise. And we know that 2,000 years ago when Jesus came to the earth here to, to bear the sins of the world, we know that in his ministry, as he started his ministry, uh, both Jesus and John the Baptist, they said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Here it is. Israel, here is the kingdom. If you want it, here it is. And we know sadly that Israel rejected that offer. And we see that in Matthew 12. Rejected that offer. And as a result of that, God scattered the Jewish people to the four corners of the earth, as we read about here uh, at the end of chapter 7. And so it was a hard issue for nation Israel. It was a hard issue because they did not know what God's word said. And uh, this is going to pick us up into chapter 7 here. And uh, I'm going to start reading uh, verse 1 here. And it came to pass in the fourth year, that would be uh, December 7th, 518 B.C., um, uh, once again, you know, showing us that the God's word is real, right? It's about real people, real places, and real events here. And we're given a specific date. And it was in the year of King Darius that the word of the Lord came unto Zechariah in the fourth day of the ninth month, even in Kislev. And verse 2. When they had sent into the house of God, now by they, that is the people uh, north of Jerusalem in a town called Bethel. So when they had sent unto the house of God, Sherezer and Regemelech, and they're meant to pray before the Lord. Notice the Babylonian names here that they've been given, like Daniel and his friends, their names were changed. And uh, verse 3, and to speak unto the priests, which were in the house of the Lord of hosts, and to the prophets, saying, so they have a question, should I weep in the fifth month, separating myself, as I have done there so many years? So they're asking God a question. Should we weep in the fifth month uh, as I've done so many years? And then look at what the Lord of hosts says. Then came the word of the Lord of hosts unto me saying, Speak unto all the people of the land and to the priests saying, When you fasted and mourned in the fifth and seventh, even those seventy years, did you fast unto me, even to me? And so God's asking this question here. When you did these fasts that you're wanting to know if you should continue, of course, that fast uh, was a fast that God had not intended them to do. That fast they did while they were in captivity. And that fast was to mourn uh, the destruction of Solomon's temple. And so God's saying, when you did that fast that I didn't ask you to do, but when you did that fast, were you doing it unto me? 
Did you do it with all your heart? And look at verse 6. And, and when you did eat and when you did drink, did you not eat for yourselves and drink for yourselves? Hmm. Verse 7. Should you not hear the words which the Lord had, hath cried by the former prophets when Jerusalem was inhabited and in prosperity and cities thereof round about? when men inhabited the south and the plain. In other words, you wouldn't have been in this situation had you have listened to the prophets. When Jerusalem was in prosperity and, and everything was all good, if you would just listened to the prophets, you wouldn't be in this situation. And look at verse 8. And the word of the Lord came unto Zechariah, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, Execute true judgment. So this is what the Lord wanted. Uh, you can also uh, read uh, about this here. Uh, Isaiah chapter 58, verses 3 to 14. But this is what the Lord wanted in regards to fasts and prayer. Uh, he says, Thus speaketh of, uh, the Lord of hosts, saying, Execute true judgment, and show mercy and compassion, every man to his brother, and oppress not the widow, not the fatherless, the stranger, nor the poor, and let none of you imagine evil against his brother in your heart. Well, friends, that's, that's what God wants. God wants our hearts. You know, uh, render not your garments, but your hearts. He wants our hearts tuned to him. Look at uh, verse 11, and, and what, what, was their, what was their attitude? What did, did they do that? No, verse 11 says, But they refused to hearken and, to, and, and pulled away the shoulder and stopped their ears that they should not hear. Yea, they made their hearts an adamant stone, lest they should hear the law and the words which the Lord of hosts hath sent in his spirit by the former prophets. Therefore came uh, a great wrath from the Lord of hosts. Therefore it has come to pass that as he cried, that they would not hear, so they cried, and I would not hear, saith the Lord. And then in verse 14, you know, as a result of this, God scattered them and uh and as you're looking at verse 14, it says, into all the nations he scattered them. Well, when the temple was destroyed in 586 BC, and there was three waves of, of uh, that Nebuchadnezzar came in, and uh, Daniel and Ezekiel were taken in waves one and two, and then eventually the temple was destroyed in 586 BC. But the people were scattered about 350 miles to the east in Babylon. They weren't scattered to the four corners of the earth. That happened after 70 AD. That happened after the rejection um, of the kingdom offer that Jesus offered the house of Israel. And so it's prophetic here in verse 14, uh, looking uh, into that future time where God would scatter them to the four corners of the earth here. But God wanted their hearts. God wanted their hearts. He didn't want their fasts. He didn't want, he didn't want their empty prayers. And friends, God's, nothing's changed today. God still wants our hearts. Uh, look, if you will, at um, Nehemiah chapter 1 and verse 4 here. Nehemiah chapter 1, verse 4. And it, it says, And it came to pass when I heard these words that I sat down and wept, okay, and mourned certain days, and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. You see, God wants our hearts if we're going to fast, if we're going to come to him in prayer. He, he wants our hearts. He wants, he wants us to be honest with him. He wants to have a relationship with us. He wants to have fellowship with us, not just a, not just a ritual. Um, look, if you will, here at Joel chapter 2 and verse 12. It says, Therefore also now saith the Lord, Turn ye even to me with all your heart, and with fasting, and with weeping, and with mourning, and rend not your heart, and not your garments, and turn unto the Lord your God. For he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and repenteth him of the evil. And so God wants our hearts. God wants us to turn to him with, with all of our heart here. Let's look at the New Testament for a moment and go to Colossians chapter 3, uh, verse 23. These are only a few verses here. 3, verse 23 in Colossians. And it says, and whatsoever you do, do it heartedly as to the Lord and not unto men. And so there's this idea of, of coming to the Lord, uh, broken before him, honest with him, seeking him diligently. Uh, and, and this is what the God wants of the world today. This is what God wanted of the people. 
And he says, you're asking me about fasting. First off, did you fast to me? Secondly, if you would have listened to me in the first place, you wouldn't be in this predicament. You wouldn't have been in captivity these 70 years. You wouldn't even be asking me this question. But we know that, that they didn't, and their hearts grew cold towards the Lord. And here, when the Lord came and offered them the kingdom, as the prophets foretold, the kingdom offered was rejected. And after 70 AD, when the Romans came in and destroyed the temple, there was the dispersion of the Jews to the four corners of the earth. And, you know, as the world looks to that, uh, that event, um, you know, um, as the Jewish people have been scattered to the, to, to the four corners of the earth, th that's history. We can see that today the Jewish people are still scattered. Uh, there's more people, nor Jewish people living in Israel now than uh, in anywhere in the world. The United States is second. France is third. I believe Canada's fourth in that list. But we still see Jewish people dispersed as proof positive of the prophecies of God, including this one here in Zechariah. But when we come into chapter 8 next time we meet, we're going to see that God has a promise. Um, and uh, God's gathering his people back today. Uh, when we look at chapter 8, I love that chapter because it's talking about in the millennial kingdom. And we're going to see where the preeminence is shift, shifted from the Gentiles unto the Jewish people. And so there's still hope for the Jewish people because God loves them with an everlasting love. And even though they turned away from God, uh, God still has a plan for them. That he's going to save them physically and spiritually. And, uh, and God still has a plan for you and I, even though our hearts have turned away from the Lord. He has a plan, and he can save us physically and spiritually, but we need to come to him on his terms and in his way, and we need to seek him diligently, confessing our sins and putting our faith and trust in his son, Jesus. And so, friends, that's all the time we have today. I hope you uh, like this. If you did, uh, give it a like on my Facebook page or YouTube channel. Share it with all your friends. And so until next time, shalom and God bless.